it's uh, September 9th, 2017, uh, 11.08 a.m. And uh, here with, with Kit and Ed. And uh, uh, it's bring your uh, own identity. So um, uh, let's check in. Uh, uh, what do you have, Ed? Uh, or you know, uh, uh, where? Uh, what? Uh, what's your uh, 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 interest today? Whatever. <laughs> hey, hey, Jim. Hey, hey, Kit. Um, well, I've I've been away for about a month, maybe even on on this topic. Um, my focus over the past couple weeks has been on um, selling rock tokens as part of fundraising for. Um, the R chain cooperative. So that's kind of where my focus has been, but, um, on, uh, sort of wearing the lively gig and R chain holding hats, uh, we've been doing some work in the identity area. Um, so lively gig has been, uh, building out the beginnings of uh, a wallet experience and even, uh, even sort of the, the basic of a wallet is, you know, the identifier. So, um, you know, the cryptographic keys that the wallet runs off of. So the relationship between, you know, that sort of, if you will, root identity identifier or, or a, let's call it the beginning of an identity. Um, you know, so that's, that's related to basic uh, authentication when you log in, as you guys know. Uh, and then um, the model that we're building out under is that one, one identity can have multiple accounts in the Ethereum sense of the word um, for accounts. And then those accounts uh, hold a variety of tokens in the wallet. So um, I'm, I'm uh, very keenly interested in working through that. Um, we're doing some UI work and some discussions um, around that. And we need to accelerate around there. So I'm still, I'm still learning, I have to say, um, uh, you, you know, as, as you guys may know, I've studied uh, the um, Sovereign Identity Framework, uh, or uh, I think that's the name of the, the document that they have, which has an excellent glossary, especially. So even independent of their implementation and maybe some of their philosophy, the glossary is just excellent. And so, um, uh, you know, I've been working through that design is how, what, what does it mean to create a user experience that joins the two things of identity, sort of like what you port and others are doing and wallets. So you can authenticate to a site and then you can, for example, if you want to authenticate to a website and then you um, make payments on the site uh, using a related um, account. So that's kind of uh, what I've been noodling in my spare time. <laughs> well, I'm not dialing for dollars. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, we've been di uh, diving a little more deeply into Uport. Yes, great. Um, uh, you know, the, b the basic st uh, stuff uh, uh, took a, a bit of fiddling to get through, and we still have to. Uh, uh, we're at the point now where we're trying to. Uh, 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 yeah, and I've, I've shared, I've shared, uh, or connected with you as a friend because you shared your QR code. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm on Uport connected to you. Uh, now what is my question? But <laughs> well, we're, uh, you know, the first thing we're doing is, to, you know, we're just following the developer.uport.me examples, and we want to do an attribution of the claim. Okay. Excellent. And you know, and once we you know, once we figure out how to do that, we can do that. Basically, we do that from you know, from the uh, uh, you know, from interactive, you know, interactively uh, invoking Node, and just running a little JavaScript to do the you know, Excellent. do the thing, uh, the things. Um, it took us a long time just to figure out where the you know where the uh, actual controller was of the proxy contract and what it does it's not it's not a documented contract when you come to etherscan um uh, but so we're still relating what the code does and the contracts that are created uh but uh then we want to create a organizational identity 
like for our chain. Okay. Yeah, and then that would be in in Newport terms, that would be a a DAP, or that would be an well, is it's it, regular Newport identity at this point. <laughs> is it called a is it called a person in Newport's parlance? Uh, yeah. Don't they have just person and DAP is the only two choices? Yeah. Um, they should have they should have entity and they should have thing, but that's beside the point. <laughs> yeah. I, um, the, uh, uh, you know, in terms of creating the identity, it's exactly the same as a person. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Okay. So, and uh, then we want to associate members with the identity. Yes. And then we, with the attrib you know, with the attribution, the members and the contract, then we're in business to do the uh, KYC ALM uh, functions. Yeah, it, that's very interesting. That's and I, I, uh, I like that. And then I mean, that may need to be augmented with some uh, people processes. But then, but then, 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 then that's the basis for voting. Right, or could be could be right if we can we are relatively short of uniqueness. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, and uh, also the uh, service discovery is not part of the U-Port specification. Um, it's part of the uh, decentralized identity specification and open ID. Um, and we oh, Kit, hold, hold on. Give me a minute, Kit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got a screenshot. I'll connect. <laughs> Yeah, it, I, I'll get it, it here in a second. Yeah, it, it should work with your phone. We succeeded in doing it with Gary via Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I did sort of with Jim, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I, I had it in the uh, uh, in the uh, Slack. Yeah, yeah but uh, Zoom should be fine, too. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, so that's uh, where our investigation uh, 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 rests at this point, and uh, you know uh, so we're still going through the examples from the developer side of Newport, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, what the uh, uh, service discovery does is it gives the sovereign identity. Service discovery lets people doesn't lock the person into any identity system. Uh, because you can discover all the services that the user has for so, find so can you, themselves. Can you send me a, a link where I can read about service discovery? Uh, so, Kit, we should now be connected. Great. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I have to uh, uh, look that up. The... Uh, the the um, uh, there's a uh, you know one of the group I mean there's a, there's a working group that's uh, focusing on the service discovery now yeah essentially it's identical to the open ID service discovery it's just oh, okay so if I just search for open ID service discovery I'll learn about yeah, it it uses you know I mean it, you know they're using a well known URL uh, relative to the address. Uh, of the uh, service provider. Is it called a uh, open ID connect discovery? Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay. And you know, we, uh, the difference, main difference is, is that, you know, uh, we'll be using, uh, URLs that are, are, uh, uh, are, uh, what do you call it? Um, IPFS addresses uh, for uh, which is what where Uport stores its information. But um, you know we want to make provision for people to use any provider. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so in the context of uh, the cooperative and uh, either KYC or voting. Um, could you walk me through a use case how service discovery is used in that context? Well, um, or could be, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, okay. The, the direction 
changes every week to some extent. Okay, there's a number of open ID providers we can use as a single sign-on for the co-op. Oh, just um, uh, off, off zero or... or um, and let's say we use a new server. OAuth 2, I meant, so OAuth 2, for example. Yeah. Um, uh, which is, yeah, I mean, uh, OpenID Connect is just OAuth 2 with uh, uh, a little uh, 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 window dressing. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, so, uh, 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 well, we're, uh, you know, we're, look, we're looking at, uh, at a number of open ID providers that, that, uh, a person can run themselves. Okay. Okay. So that they, they don't have to trust anybody. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and, uh, you know, this will, uh, you know, it's sort of, like uh, uh, in the bring your own identity sense, uh, uh, you know, people will be able to bring in whatever identity provider they want. Uh, even Facebook will work as an open ID provider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's scary. No, no, it's just, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, but. Uh, uh, no, we want to run uh, uh, ours, and there's a very good one with the HIE of one project um, that's focused on healthcare. Uh, they have like the only real uh, solution that is really self-sovereign that a person can run themselves. Uh, which, which one again? HIE of one. Uh, that's a uh, 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 grouper, uh, Adrian Grouper, who's a uh, He's a doctor, and he's also, you know, been a leader in the identity space for the last decade or with it. So, is this uh, H One Card Solutions HIP Global? H I E. Oh, H I E. Sorry. H I E. O M O N E. I've I've got it. Uh, Adrian Grouper's got it. Yeah. So uh, he, uh, we're working with him in the identity group in uh, Dig Life. Uh, he's the leader of that group, and uh, uh, in one of our sessions, we did try to run his software, and uh, 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 we ended up, well, I ended up <laughs> running uh, the setup as root, which I shouldn't have done, and uh, the machine was uh, attacked with a denial of service attack. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> But uh, that uh, we didn't haven't we haven't tried running it again. But uh, um, uh, uh, that is a very good solution. Uh, right now we have more uh, inertia behind, behind uh, using uh, the Mattermost uh, as the uh, OAuth two provider um, since uh, we can relate an activist ID to their Mattermost login and know that it's the same person. Okay, in both places, and obviously we would want to do that same thing uh, with the uh, Discord uh, for members. Uh, so in the dis, um, I don't know. I haven't investigated Discord as an open. Yeah, app. sorry, I'm just I'm not that up to speed on some of this. So um, in the case of Discord. The idea is to use that as a, a required second factor authentication for members or for some some forum that would be Mattermost as an OAuth provider or someone else. Yes. Well, okay. Mattermost is an OAuth provider. We can use that. Okay. Oh, uh, OAuth tool provider. Um, I still have to look into Discord. Okay. The ideal for uh -huh. a sign-on for the community is that they can bring their own identity, whether it's Mattermost or whether it's Discord. Got it. Okay, but we, we ultimately want to relate them. We don't want to have, we want to know it's the same person on Discord that it is on Mattermost. <laughs> right? We want, you know, uh, it linked up. So, uh, you know, a member has one identity. 
Got it, got it. Um, Good stuff. Yeah. So I was gonna, you know, I was gonna uh, plow ahead if we had time on the U port. Um, I, uh, uh, but I'm gonna put off doing uh, any work today. I'm still preoccupied about Irma coming down our throat. <laughs> yeah. Know, not coming for another day. Uh, Kit, do uh, you have anything to add to what I've uh, 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 given to uh, Ed at this point? Um, well, one thing, uh, a while back, I posted a, a link to Eternity, who was working on a wallet in uh, the Slack. And Eternity is a, a frenemy of ours. And they posted uh, a Medium page with a bunch of uh, mock-ups of their wallet and the work they're doing. Yeah. You might want to just take a look at that. Maybe you can steal something. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I saw the link when you posted it and, and uh, looked at a, a few things from them. Thank you. OK, then. Uh, I think that, that, you know, in terms of the identity manager functionality, I think the HIE of one is a good model. It's not really, I haven't seen it documented as well as the Eternity one. But. Uh, uh, in um in so in the eternity did they have um I'm I'm re refreshing my mind with uh, their site yeah they, they have a mock-up of the identity management screens and it it, it, it did a really nice nice job of of documenting and and, and uh, 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 you know uh, laying them out and such uh, it's definitely worth looking at that in terms of you know, uh, uh, taking advantage of their work. And really, it, it, you know, um, uh, I think uh, uh, Adrian Gruper's group did a great job with their identity management functions as well. Uh, although, yeah, uh, I think you actually have to use the software to see it. The difference is Adrian actually has it working Whereas it's just an idea for the eternity folks at this point. Interesting. I just tracked down the link and posted it again to uh, save uh, searching in Slack. Thank you. That's what I was looking around for. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, Eternity did an ICO and uh, they made a lot of money. I invested in it and some people I know here in uh, the Netherlands invested a lot. And then they also got partially hacked in that uh, parody wallet. Uh, oh, right. The, yeah, only partially, fortunately. So they still have uh, money to do stuff with. And there's been a bit of, um, what would you call it? Uh, churn uh, in terms of the technical team, but they're, they seem to have come out of it and they're moving mm -hmm. forward. And I call them a frenemy because technically they're, they're moving really hard in the direction of state channels and uh, taking things uh, onto a second level above a blockchain. And mm -hmm. if they succeed, then they're going to have an interesting solution that uh, we should keep an eye on. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I, um, there, you know, while there is competition, uh, in another sense, we're all in this together. And uh, I have, you know, just a ton of respect for the innovators in, in blockchain and, and, you know, self sovereign identity and so forth. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like the word friend of me, because, yeah. you know, it's a, uh, <laughs> It, it plays it off. <laughs> yeah, or, or co opetition or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh, you know, it's amazing, uh, you know, that uh, so many people think that, you know, that one thing is going to be the only thing out there, you know, you know, that, I mean, you know, uh, it's going to have a monopoly. And no, no. And uh, so it's so important to have. Uh, 
you know, uh, open standards, uh, that there can be multiple user experiences around and so forth. Yeah, there'll always be, you know, a Walmart and a Kmart or whatever. You know, it's not going to be, you know, we, we, they, they're going to they're going to keep us honest in terms of, you know, providing value. And uh, I think we can, you know, we can uh, uh, learn from each other. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And Jim, I took a look at your uh, UMA links. Those are uh, what very yeah. mature specifications, I would yeah. say. They're what? The UMA uh, links that you posted in the identity channel from Contera. Right. Um, you were saying they're mature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the UMA two. Uh, simplified things very nicely for us, and I'm looking. I'm looking to put uh, UMA capability as slash commands uh, into Mattermost and uh, you know Discord. Yeah. So that, I was, no, our initial inter interface to managing identity can be you know simple slash commands rather than. Uh, developing a fancy application. Yeah. And the right communication environment is very convenient. <laughs> yeah, if you're a command line guy. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, we can actually, I mean, you can actually, you know, type in a, we could have a default where you type slash ID and just enter and you get a GUI. Um, we can do that too. Um, okay. There's some tools that can, you know that make these GUIs pretty simple to interface with these web hooks and such. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you definitely try that too. But you know, if you're just uh, uh, using the command line, you know, it still will fill in, you know, the names of people, you know. Uh, mentions and channels mention um, and things that make the make it easier to enter your commands yeah yeah that's nice <clears throat> make it as friendly as possible so you don't have to memorize everything so uh, i noticed that uh in mattermost ian has been uh, testing it out and he posted uh last night and he said uh, he's really impressed and he suggested building bridges between these forums that we have because we now have Slack and Discord and Mattermost. <laughs> and he actually built a little bot and he called it the, e the Ian bot. And he said it's, uh, it's just a, a, a messaging bot that uh, will uh, funnel stuff through to uh, another forum or something. But, <laughs> We, we should take him up on that while we, uh, yeah. while it's hot, so to speak, huh? Yeah, you know, hopefully we can, you know, uh, I mean, it seems like most admins and programmers and such, you know, they, they work alone. It's very hard to, to get them into a situation where we're working together. I mean, we can do it silently in the GitHub or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> or almost silently. But, uh, um, yeah. yeah, it would be great if we could uh, uh, get him in to do to coach a coach a session or whatever on the stuff he's doing. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll have to see if I can do if I can get him to do that. He may be willing. Um, um, well, again, get it while it's hot. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So. Um, Uh, let me, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you're there. You here, Ed. I have a question about the, uh, the web app that was built and used for registration. Yeah. 
and that uh, well that that relates to uh, work that some of the activists did. I saw a comment from uh, HJ that we should think about uh, uh, merging those two things, and that that web app was was pretty nice. I, I must admit, it's uh, <clears throat> it it worked well, and the guy who built it seemed to seemed to have a good head on his shoulders and uh, know what was going on. Yeah, it was put together um, fairly quickly, uh, and he, he did a great job. Um, it's, uh, let's see, it's built on uh, Angular, and I'm trying to remember the database that's underneath it. Uh, I want to say level DB, but I'm not 100% sure about that. It's a single connection database uh, um, that's pretty lightweight. So, um, uh, and it's running up on AWS. Uh, uh, Bronco is the uh, developer's name. Bronco, okay. Because yeah. I, I don't even know his handle, which is unpronounceable, but uh, okay. Yeah, it's B B G something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can uh, I can type it into the chat here in a second. Um, but yeah, I agree uh, directionally that once the um, token sale, the private token sale, is completed that needs to then evolve to, um, um, you know, general membership uh, sign up. Um, we, I think, you know, we're going to need uh, additional features. There are pub open source mem member management systems. Um, I don't think we need to build everything from scratch, um, but uh, HJ has got some, you know, a list of um, people that signed up as membership or as members, um, and then we changed, I forget what the, changed the name because we didn't really have the membership program all up and running um, from a payment perspective and so forth. But those, those lists need to be merged um, and, uh, and then managed and including um, this kind of uh, authentication mechanism to, 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 to uh, make sure we can collect votes and so forth in a, in a great, very secure way. Yeah. Some of these... Some of these uh, votes, of course, are very impactful, um, as, as you probably know, but I'll just say it here, right? So in addition to uh, electing directors and passing initiatives, uh, you know, the, the board is going to, uh, where possible, um, put in front of the membership uh, any, any major issues related to uh, token governance and um, and that's and uh, even uh, potential hard forks and those kinds of things. So these will become uh, really important votes. Have you seen Jake Gilbert's uh, uh, rock-based voting on GitHub issues? Oh, I've heard about it. And he he, he uh, was shown just a, a a little teeny tiny bit of it about three weeks ago or two weeks ago. But I'd like to see. I'd like to see a more complete demo. Okay, hang on. Let me uh, get my MetaMask uh, running, and I can do a little demo. Oh, that'd be awesome. So yeah, certainly, if we could, you know, connect the registration of your, you know, MetaMask Ethereum uh, address with your member ID, uh, you know, we store that in the database of registrants, uh, members, um, there you go. <laughs> Is it using, uh, it's voting on GitHub issues? Yes. Uh, okay, I have my password wallet with 700 passwords open now. <laughs> Can you share your screen? <laughs> yes, I will, as soon as I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I switched to another window. <laughs> it's okay. It, it's it's actually it's it's KeyPass, which is a, a decent one, and it doesn't show the passwords, and, but you can copy them. Uh, this is an app, so MetaMask. Okay. Yeah. The the uh, prototype Ethereum contract that we have, uh, we did update a few weeks ago. Let's take out the collection of the membership fee and uh, 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 closer to the use case that we have. Um, now, um, uh, 
the one use case we were thinking of, uh, that we uh, 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 that we had was mailing people cards with a code that they would then enter, and that would link their Ethereum address with their membership uh, and uh, 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 their their postal mailing address. Yeah, uh, and there there is some Ethereum, as you probably know, there's some Ethereum project out there for proof of address. Right, but we wouldn't use that. <laughs> yeah, but you could you could use part of it or use or be inspired by it. <laughs> the um, uh, yeah, now we uh, uh, this would mean that our chain uh, uh, proved your address. It wouldn't mean that this company proved your address, but our chain doesn't know what it is. <laughs> okay, there's that's, that's a big difference. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, originally we were, uh, 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 we were going to do uh, phone and email. Um, when somebody gets into Discord or whatever, uh, we've already proved their email. We just have, may want to record that um, to say that this account proved an email address as an identity factor of that. Uh, is visible on the chain, so anybody can see this member has proven these attributes. It doesn't tell them what they are. It just tells them that they have a strong identity because they've proven to our chain these factors from this address. It doesn't say who that address belongs to, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, the whole Uport investigation is how does Uport, you know, how do we use Uport uh, in this? And, uh, 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 and uh, uh, you, know, I, uh, you know, I guess it's uh, bring your own Uport uh, address. Uh, the other issue is whether we made Uport address required or not. Uh, it seems simple enough to have a U4 proxy um, for anyone, which is, you know, the lead, leading now. Um, uh, they can provide a U4 address or we create one. It's uh, pretty simple. And then we... Well, we can't, we can't create... You're, you're not saying we would create their U-Port identity, but they... Well, I, I'm saying that the contract that they execute. Okay, let's say they're verifying their phone number. Okay. Okay, so they, so they, they put in their code and they put in their U-Port address. Or, boom, we create one for them. Uh, they executed the contract, not us. Well, they still need, I'm confused, they still need a signing device, a right. cryptographic signing device. So you're saying that would, in all cases, be Uport or, or, some, or another Web3 provider or, or, could be, um, or could be some other app? I don't, I'm confused. Yeah, um, uh, they would use anything to sign the key. Any, you know, any uh, wallet to sign the contract. Yeah, but what what would we create for them? Um, Uport proxy. Okay, in other words, they would be creating it themselves. We wouldn't be creating. I mean, they they're the ones running the contract, not us. <laughs> I think I understand. I I need to study Uport a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, confused as to what we can do with it also. I, I think I see what you mean. So the same code that Uport is using for its identity um, or, or, or attributes, uh, probably more accurately, um, is uh, we could instantiate and they could sign it, even without a Uport um, user interface, but they could sign it with MetaMask, perhaps. Right. Well, the, the, uh, the Uport factory 
would be run from our contract is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. So they would run our contract, which would run a U-port factory to create a U-port account, which it would assign to the user optionally. I'm just trying to make it simple. And, uh, you know, it, 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 I, you know, the question is, you know, can we do this in one step or do they have to do three steps, you know, to do it? And uh, in the case of the voting here, uh, uh, they had to use two steps. Uh, he had, uh, uh, you have to sign an allow contract and then, uh, or a trans transaction to do an allow and then you had to sign a transaction to do the actual transfer. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, that's something we may run into uh, with the uh, contract we're developing for identity is that it has to be multiple steps in order for it to get the right permissions. Yeah, I can, I can demo that now. Um, you can see my MetaMask in yep. the little pop-up? Okay, well, I've got some, uh, some test uh, uh, ETH and some test rock here. And this is running on the Robeston uh, testnet. And uh, here you can see uh, the voting, which has been inserted in the GitHub page. I, uh, this extension, so I have a MetaMask. Ah, R-Chain issue voting extension, okay. And the R-Chain issue voting extension. So both of these are active right now, and uh, that's, that's required uh, to have it work. Yeah. If I switch back to the issues, then yeah, I can pick one. Uh, well, we were just talking about this one, so maybe I, I want to vote for this one. And it takes it takes a moment, but you can't see it. But a, another window has popped up, uh -huh. which looks like this. It's it's a MetaMask uh, sign. Yes, confirmed transaction. Does it have a yeah. description on it? So, um, and so. When I look at that other little window, then all I need to do is uh, click that uh, submit button. Okay, so there's there's a MetaMask uh, call. I'm not sure if it's using uh, Web3.js, but it might be using F.js that you can do a local sign without spending any money, any ether. So that would be a better way to invoke, perhaps, <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, if we can cut it down to one transaction, that would be, 100% better. <laughs> no, what, what I'm saying is um, it doesn't even need to be broadcast to the blockchain. It's just using a local sign of a message. Yeah. Um, yeah. Costs no ether. Okay. And so that would be a lower barrier to entry to get things set up. Yeah. Yeah, except you wouldn't see other people's votes on the... Uh... You wouldn't see the vote count that other people did. <laughs> um, that is true. You would, it would be more of a, you'd have more of a centralized tally. So that is a risk. That's a good point, Jim. But you would, I mean, from the, from the provider's perspective, you would have, um, you, you would have assurances that that ident, uh, that account signed the message, but yeah, you don't, wouldn't have public voting um, visibility. That's true. You know, in a in a uh, in a verifiable way. So now this has to wait for the first transaction to be confirmed, and then uh, the signer will come up again to sign the second transaction. Yeah, there it is. You signed both. So there it oh, is. Jim, Jim, can you run by that again? You were saying you would see it. Oh, I see. You see it being broadcast. And then, and then uh, once it's confirmed, it's registered as the vote. Yeah, actually something has changed because the last time I did this, this window popped up and I had to uh, click submit. And then when I went back here, then I had to approve a transaction here in this little MetaMask uh, pop-up. This time the window came up twice. 
And I thought it didn't work the first time, so I clicked it again and didn't say anything. But apparently, it's just a little different. Um, yeah, but this is this is uh, this is really great. Yeah, and it's important to remember that part of the uh, let's see, what else uh, do I want to vote for? Acquisition of developers. Part of the intention of Jake in developing this extension is it requires you to vote with Rock. Yes, I got it. Okay. That's, right. that's an interesting twist. Yep. Yeah. And so that actually, you know, gives us a purpose to the rock in terms of uh, um, <clears throat> having it be an asset as opposed to a security. Utility, yeah. Yeah, uh, utility. So um, the, uh, uh, the plan currently in our contracts is that uh, we would white whitelist members so that they only only the members could vote with the account that they registered with the co-op and that okay. way that way we, we we're not going to have people other people hacking at our contracts <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, 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 so uh, uh, we uh, that enables us to go live with contracts that uh, 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 are safe enough, rather than being uh, totally vetted in the sense that if you make right. it fully public, you have to worry about. It. I mean, if a member misbehaves, we just take them off the whitelist. And yep, I'm following. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. I I'm imagining. A, a number of things, for example, different um, uh, classifications of votes. Um, you could say, you know, there requires to be some um, um, quorum, uh, and then some are might might be, you know, just majority, and some might be a super majority to pass the vote. Right. Um, now, this and, one doesn't prevent you from voting twice. Okay, but that that could be put in in the contract behind all this. Absolutely, that's not. Yeah. And 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 the 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 white list, which essentially is the membership list, could be in another contract or in the same contract. Um, I guess it have, yeah, separate than the vote, but it could be in the yeah. The, we, the want membership to, list. we want to make separate contracts for each function as much as we can. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it, it's a little more expensive to do that, but um, it's uh, it's more it's more scalable. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah, and I queried Jake. It would also be possible to uh, limit voting to uh, users that have check-in rights in this repo. Um, yeah, that's not the that's not bad. But I'm just thinking the the. The, the most interesting thing, and of course, every um, uh, blockchain project has this challenge and every decentralized challenge is, is governance, right? So if we could, if we could um, move toward implementing governance with, um, you know, uh, membership and have membership where they're unique members and, and members in good standing, um, and then we handle the, any kind of quorum, uh, rules for votes of certain types then all of a sudden we have the the not all of a sudden but after that work we have some um basis for for better governance yeah and, and you know and, and if if you put the uh if you put the requirements in the front end code uh somebody can always hack it and get by it oh definitely yeah this contract. this has to be this has to be in the uh the uh, smart contract and, right. and so forth and it, and it gives purpose to the rock, which is great. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a, a tiny subtle difference, but these are the two, the two screens that I had to uh, submit. This was the first one and click. That was the second one. So, so why, why do you think you had to do two or is that a bug? It's not a bug. It's part of the uh, functionality. First, first you have to uh, accept, the contract, then you have to accept the payment. Oh, okay. I know in the uh, FJS uh, uh, interface, um, 
that you can put a description at towards the bottom of the MetaMask screen, but I'm not sure if WebJS, Web3.js has that as well, but if we could get a description towards the bottom of the screen, that would be great. Yeah, probably. Yeah, the, That's awesome. So uh, you said uh, Jake is the one who implemented? Yeah. That's awesome, Jake. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's actually, uh, he really did some nice work, actually. Yeah. Really, um, the first yeah. transaction doesn't allow. Yes. Where uh, that we essentially allow the contract to spend a, uh, uh, a piece of rock and then the second one spends it and um, uh, uh, you know it's a little bit confusing why you can't just spend it directly yeah is is this last name Gilbert with a T or is it yeah. hang on a minute because I, I I normally use Firefox and I only use Chrome for demo <laughs> that's cool um, but here are here's his uh, his issues. And Great. This this is the code. Nice. So he put some work into it. <laughs> That's but, great. Hey, yeah. if you can, um, if if you can uh, put some uh, put a put a link to the beginning of this demo, um, that'd be awesome. On the, you know, on the community GitHub or sorry, um, Slack. Or member page <laughs> in Discord. But I think this uh, this whole conversation around this function is very interesting. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can uh, track down the time and uh, create one of those uh, time lock links. There you go. Okay. So. Um, we have a few minutes left. Um, if we don't have anything else, uh, I'd just like to uh, uh, show, uh, uh, add a little bit of what's going on in Matterboast. Yeah, sure. The, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, several teams here. Uh, uh, we have the uh, 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 we have the uh, uh, well. This was the activist team, whereas this was the public. So these are like di different. So you have uh, this was the team for, uh, created for the staff only, and uh, I guess this team was created for the transcripts. Uh, I don't know if that. I don't think that's going to be used now. Um, and, uh, I guess the first thing was, uh, that, uh, the content channel and, uh, uh, Patrick, uh, set this up to arrange contract, and, uh, uh, contract creation, and look at dig activities. Um, we see all these actions develop the R-Chain Dictionary. Uh, um, well, the Rockstars blog <laughs> was just an idea that that uh, came up uh, as a uh, sort of community uh, publishing thing that was separate from the cooperative. So these are these are separate than independent of the uh, GitHub issue tracking. Just a, yeah. Okay. This is. Very these are activities now there's they're not necessarily separate because if I look at newsletter drafting here I'll see that that links to get it. okay but the, the mechanism is separate okay got it okay um, and uh, I look at uh, uh, members uh, I see who's involved in it I see that Patrick's the lead we don't have an admin um, the idea is for every channel here, we would have a lead and an admin, and then we would have members. They could be different levels. Um, if, uh, for example, here I have no commitment to the newsletter drafting, uh, let's say I have a little bit of commitment to the newsletter. The, uh, um, so, uh, 
I don't know why it didn't go in. That might be broken. I was trying to do that this morning and I could not zoom in. That's an interesting, you know, yeah. Unfortunately, this is being developed as we're talking uh, here. Uh, but this shows all the activities in all the channels in all the teams that are participating in the, uh, uh, the trial of the big life. Um, that's funny because I was using it this morning. I had no problem. But uh, Joe Chen is doing some upgrades, and that could affect us. Um, uh, let me just uh, click one more to make the... See, just to make sure it doesn't work <laughs> still. Now, really? okay, we can see that uh, uh, I've committed some effort to the Archain Dictionary. I guess uh, 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 other people haven't committed uh, yet with the Dick command, uh, but uh, there's all these activities within the content circle. Uh, within uh, our chain. Um, you can see in the identity circle, we have uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the work study. We have the- uh, very, very fancy looking. Is this uh, a auto generation of a Prezi or what is this? This is, uh, this is all open source software. It's a mattermost integration that we're developing in DigLife. Oh, um, okay, interesting. Okay, and there's also the uh, uh, the dashboard, um, which uh, shows all the activities throughout the uh, cooperative, and uh, I can uh, 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 if I if I right click on this, I can increase my my uh, commitment. Uh, you know. more. <laughs> The smiling and sweating. <laughs> That's good. Okay, then click on it. Uh, uh, I can ar archive it. Okay. Uh, and uh, this will probably take me right there into the channel. Um, and I, uh, uh, I can also look at all channels, and now I see things happening. Uh, in uh, 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 in different uh, participating, and uh, this is uh, these are Divi Dow tiles, and uh, these are Giveth.io, and these are sort of the lab, these are the lab tiles. So if I, I can zoom in on those, and I can see what's going on in the lab. And we have things, the heart is like norms. Uh, we have documents. Uh, we have goals. We have mattermost channels, et cetera. Um, but um, I just wanted to, uh, uh, I mean, there's more to this, but um, uh, we, uh, we are participating in the trial and uh, uh, paying some bounties for people to participate uh, in the trial of uh, the uh, uh, social ledger, which is what this inter interface is called. The, the Mattermost uh, Force. Integration. And yeah. uh, also, you know, uh, we're looking to how, how this can integrate. No. Um, we, you know, he was saying that it'd be pretty easy to hook this into Discord as well. Rendering the uh, the uh, output back into matter most seems to, I would think, is a little bit difficult. But uh, uh, I mean, back into Discord, but, uh, uh, it's certainly doable. And you sort of want to be able to type commands in wherever you are and have them work. Uh, and just as there's many different, there's several different Mattermost instances involving this, um, this one group in Indonesia is actually interfacing with this with their system. 
So it will automatically uh, uh, work with their workflow system. Oh, oh, who who did you say is doing that? Um, it's um, or what platform? Uh, they have their own platform, which is uh, actually. Uh, I just missed the word. Who who has their own platform? Um, uh, Al, uh, it's uh, Alex from Indo Indonesia. I, I I'm not sure what the name of this okay. operation is. Alex Rollin. Alex Rollin. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, is a powerhouse. Um, uh, but uh, 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 you know, we're lo looking at adding the, uh, the UMA functionality, identity management functions. Uh, not so much in, uh, maybe not in big life, uh, but certainly in Divi, for Divi and our chain, we were looking at doing that. Um, and probably big, and big life as well. They're also uh, looking at putting in, uh, uh, you know, uh, currently this, uh, you know, people uh, claim tokens within an activity, but those tokens are not, uh, just have meaning within the activity. Um, uh, they, you know, can show, <coughs> you know, the, the uh, largest to smallest commitment, their commitment. And then the other side of that is the award part of that, where we are awarding the bounties. And we're looking at integrating that award part uh, into it. So people come in, they um, commit to be involved in an activity. Uh, the activity produces fruit, and then the people are re rewarded. Interesting stuff. Hey, I got to get going soon. Yep, me um, too. I've, I've really enjoyed uh, the the, uh, the journey this morning and education. Um, and uh, again, uh, kudos to to Jake Gilbert for that for that integration. And hey, look forward to catching up and stay safe, Jim, through the storm. Thanks much. Ping, ping, ping us uh, when it's all clear. <laughs> Let us know you're safe. Take care. All right. Yeah.